how much um, he deserves my praise. And <clears throat> whether I'm going through something or not going through something or having something good happen, regardless, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him through the storm, through everything. And um, um, it's just <laughs> it's weird how um, this pandemic has affected a lot of people, but I feel like it's been more positive. Uh, I'm looking at it that way now. At the beginning, no. But, you know, I'm more and more, uh, God is showing me my attitude about different things. And I'm like, I don't want to be that way. You know, like, okay, when you go to Walmart, you know, they have, I don't know if you guys have, know, but they have the green arrows going this way, red arrows go this way, and so forth, you know. <clears throat> and at the beginning, I was like, okay, whoops, <laughs> I went the wrong way, you know. And I I go, no, I'm not going to go back around. I'm already here, you know. There was nobody in that aisle anyway, so I just went on. But then later, I thought, no, I'm going to do it right next time. So I did. Well, the, there's this man come the wrong way, and and there's the reason why they're doing that. So, you know, I, I realize now they were trying to keep from so much congestion in the aisles. <clears throat> and this man, as I was coming over, he just broom right through me and bumped me. And I did, Brother Durham, it's got to forgive me already. But I, I remember what you said. You can stick your tongue at somebody. And I went like that, you know, <laughs> inside my mask. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm sorry. Okay. I was, be, I was just listening to Brother Durham. That's not an excuse. But anyway, uh, uh, anyway, it felt good at the time. But uh, I just continued on my journey. And uh, <clears throat> then I go to the doctor's office. And um, I uh, with Stan, not for me, for him, with him. And, you know, they, how they ask you questions and they take temperature and uh, I said, well, I'm not going, and I had my mask on, and I said, I'm not going inside with him in the room, you know, I'll stay out in the waiting room, and she said, well, then you have to go out to your car, I said, no, no, it's 91 degrees, I'm not going to go out there, it's hot, and I didn't hear, wait for her response, I just walked on over, and went and sat down, and uh, I was sitting there, and Stan came by and sat by me, <clears throat> next thing you know, they called him by five, five minutes or so, I stayed there, and oh my goodness, my nose started itching. And I grabbed a tissue from my purse and I, you know, pulled my mask up a little bit and started rubbing my nose. It was itching. I go, no, 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 you can't do this right here. No, 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 don't sneeze. But my nose had another, you know, mind of his own. So I had to pull my mask off and I grabbed a tissue. And y'all know how I sneeze, okay? You know, I mean, the whole neighborhood hears me when I sneeze. And I loud. And oh my goodness, people, they were, you know, far away, but still they like look at me. And I was sitting down and I go, it's okay. It's okay. I've only been exposed to pollen. Okay. I'm all right. I'm like, and when I sit down, I'm like, did I do that? Oh my God. Was that me that said that? But I thought, okay, Lord, I wasn't in a bad spirit, but it, it did bother me, you know, that everybody looked at me like I had poison or something, you know? And so, so anyway, and it was allergies of some kind. I, you know, I have not had it so far, but anyway, it's like, oh my goodness, Linda, you need to stop. I mean, I, I used to be the shy backward girl that, you know, I, Brother Tucker used to say, I wore my feelings in my sleeve because I cried at the drop of a hat. I dry, you know, I got my feelings hurt real easy, and, um, and I would not ever talk back to nobody or take up for myself, and I guess being around Stan over 50 years, um, you know, it rubbed off on me, and he said, well, you need to be defensive on certain things, you know, not everything, so I don't know if I was wrong or right, but I just got to forgive me if that was wrong, and, um, Anyway, I just um, also being <clears throat> the other positive thing in my life that I've been <clears throat> fasting TV. You know, uh, no, it's not a problem to a lot of you, but it's not really a problem to me. But I like to, you know, do stuff and watch something. I don't ever just watch it just to see it because I'll fall asleep. But, you know, if I'm doing my bills or I'm doing something, you know, I watch, have something on. Well, I, uh, we had gotten this little DVD player and... Um, it also plays music. If, actually, we got it for the trip, but, you know, we didn't need it. So I thought, oh, good, I'll have that for me. And um, <clears throat> things started happening. So I'm like, okay, Lord, I don't know what's going on, but, you know, you're in control, and I will do my part, and I'm going to can't fast food, so I need to fast something that I really, really take a part of. So I, okay, no TV for a week. So I didn't. So I started... <clears throat> 
li listening. Well, I, I, Sister Crow gave me some tapes from the meetings and different ones, fellowship meetings and so forth. And so I <clears throat> put it on my lap and I was listening to him. And then I started listening to music. And it's like every day. And I, sometimes I leave it on all night so I can go to sleep with it and um, cause sleep on a recliner next to it. And so I... Um, that has really helped me a lot. I mean, I know that they, we've preached in the past about, and I've done it before, <clears throat> about the more good you put in your mind, you know, the more good will come out or, you know, why bad things. Because I've noticed, you know, <clears throat> that I, you know, I, I'm more uh, easier to, to get in, you know. I don't have to pull and grind and, you know what I'm saying, and push and push like, in the past and and so my mind's already on God and I pray God just give me what I need and he gave me what I needed today he did and I thank him I thank him for touching my life for touching my heart and for helping me every day and and every moment and I you know wake up thanking him for letting me live one more day and and I uh, <clears throat> I just don't want to ever ever not be grateful you know and thankful because that's that's what i'm here for that's why i feel like that's my calling is to serve him and to praise him through it all and he's worth it worth every every time and and i'm just so thankful so thankful that i can you know um i'm not gonna if, if you somebody asked me you know how are you and i'm not having a good day i'm not gonna lie and say i'm okay i'm just gonna say i'm blessed because i am blessed through it all no matter what i'm blessed and i'm thankful First, I want to say I'm back, and it's great to be back, and I'll be here as long as I can be here. I want to tell you something about my new job. I'm working, most of you know, some of you may not know, but I want to tell you how I got the job. You know, I've been sitting home for a couple of months, and not complaining, but just at home for a couple of months, looking at each other, going outside, looking at each other, and just, yeah, you know, great. Um, but no worries. Not mad, not happy, just this is it. This is what we're going to do. And I always thought he would go back to work first because I was laid off. He was just furloughed, just, you know, we're going to open again. And so he was just waiting. And the hotels are still telling him, we're going to open, just don't know when. So just you have a job, just don't know when. But in the meantime, every now and then, I would look, okay, let's see. Let's see what's out there. Not much, but let's just see. I might apply for a job every now and then because just it wasn't to a point where, Okay, you got to go, you got to get something. But just every now and then, let's look and maybe press apply. And then a little frustration might come because recruiters, and they're just collecting resumes. I'm going, I don't have time just to pass out 100 resumes just for you to put in your application file. I'm really, when I look at something, when I see something, I'm really interested in that. I'm not just applying for 100 jobs. I'm really kind of being selective because I'm in hospitality, I've been in hospitality more than 10 years don't quite know what else to do. You know, I can go back to retail, go back to the school board, but I really, there is no school board. <laughs> you know, there is, you know, everybody's struggling, so you just think, what to do? So I sit back and I say, well, you know, this is what I know. I really like to keep doing this. Every now and then I'd apply for a job. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I applied for a job. And I told my husband when I applied for it, I said, I feel good about this one. I said, this is, you know, I've applied for other ones. And I felt like, eh, you know, but I said, this time, I feel good. A couple hours later, got an email. Hey, you know, got your resume. We'd love to talk to you. When's a good time to call? So I write back, here's my, you know, here's my number, you know, whenever, just tomorrow, two to four, just whenever. So she replies back. Great. And then when she replies back, I look at the, the title, and I said, I didn't apply for that job. I don't want that job. I don't want to do that. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I don't want to do this. This is not, I don't want to do that because I've done that. I've got PTSD from doing that. I'm, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm done. I don't want to be around people all the time with their issues because I got my own. You know, you want to tell me your story, I want to tell you my story. So 
I'm just, I don't want to do that. Just, I can't do that. So I'm thinking, do I ghost this woman? Do I not call this woman? Just, you know, what to do? So I'm thinking, oh, I know what to do. I'm going to give this enormous salary that, of course, they're not going to accept. So, oh, you know, sorry, you know, you're too high in the range. Can't, you know, we can't afford you. So that's in my mind. I'm going to call her. So we talk, and, you know, she's great, and, you know, she, we just talk, and, you know, good rapport. And she's thinking, well, you know, would, you know, just, why did you apply for this? I'm thinking, I really don't want to do that. <laughs> and she says, you don't? I said, really, my heart isn't in operations. It's just been there, done that. You know, I've seen a couple of things that I can't take away from my memory. You know, I just, I don't want to do that. She says, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, my dream job, you know, back in the day was traveling. Oh. I got something. You come and talk to me anyway. So I did. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> Traveling. <laughs> so, um, and I'm just, I put that, I'm thinking just the whole time, like with the shoes from a couple of years ago, this is God. Because I did, I applied for the wrong job, and I didn't want that job, and just through talking and being patient and being nice, I got something. And then the salary, you know, just this, enormous fee. I just said, you know, hey, you know, let's, um, you know, pay me that. So, of course, she came back with a counter, and I said, well, I can't accept a counter. That's going to be a deal breaker. I can't do it. <laughs> she said, well, you know what? Fine. We accept it. And I went, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. You <laughs> know, fine. So, I'm getting kind of excited. You know, okay, you know, let's getting excited, but still leery. It's traveling. You know, what do you do? I won't be really working with the staff, just usually one-on-one -on -one with the GM or maybe interviewing or getting the building together. So, um, so I sit back here just to kind of, even though I'm not with people, just to, you know, just to kind of make sure that nothing does happen. And so far, I've only been with one person last week one-on-one, -on -one, so I feel pretty good with that. But in the meantime, husband's home and um, quiet guy, a um, man of few words. I got home Friday, TV's on, <laughs> and he talked all night, Friday. He talked all day Saturday. <laughs> he just, he talked nonstop. <laughs> just, I remember texting my parents, you know, oh, my goodness, mouth almighty, tongue everlasting. This man is just, you know, my, my ears are tired. He's just talking. So um, pray for him just that he, you know, gets, because just being there totally by himself just, you know, wasn't, you know, he did okay, but I kind of wanted to share how I got this job because I'm just, this is, you know, how it all worked out. You apply for something and just the whole way, I just wanted to say this was God. So I may miss you because sometimes I may, I could get a week assignment, I can get a four-week assignment. So sometimes I might not be here, but I do believe this is what God wants because just during the interview and just during the whole process, they kind of altered and created a position and did things I say for me so I give that to him because she didn't have the job open I didn't apply for the job but yet this is what I'm doing so just wanted to share that with you that um hang steadfast you know be strong just be sometimes just be quiet and just sit there and don't get too frustrated you know because every now and then, I'll tell you, I had, I had a day in a chair one day, and he just looked at me, and he came in the chair, he came in the living room, he saw me, and he says, you're upset, and you're going to give yourself a stroke, because just the, I'm looking at you, and just your facial expression, uh, you've got to get better. But, I mean, that was just maybe like one time for about a couple, like an evening. I had a bad evening, but overall okay, but just in that evening, just a rough evening. But I just kind of wanted to share this testimony, because it wasn't, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. You know, I'm going to do that. It was just God saying, okay, you're going to apply for that. And then I have this plan for you. So I just wanted to um, share that because I just wanted to share that with you and let you know this is this is going on with me today. Y'all are so patient. Y'all look so good sitting out there watching me do this. Uh, 
I turn this on? Is it this right here? All right, we got that. Can everybody hear me? I love these testimonies, Sister Fisher and Sister Janique. We're glad, aren't we glad that Sister Janique's back? God's helping her. And it's good to see Sister Abraham back. We've been missing her and we've been praying for her. And I'm so thankful for, y'all just look so good with or without your mask. And yes, Sister Fisher, you can stick your tongue out. They don't know. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> but I think a person good, and I think you, I think you, I love these, I love these testimonies, and Sister Janique's testimony sounds a little bit like mine, but I wanted to tell you a funny story. We're going to go to prayer here, receive the offering, but years ago, I, I got saved when I was 16 years old, and I started going to a small denominational church, and, and we got a new pastor, and he was, I was 16, maybe 17 at that time, and me and my family, we were heavily involved in the church. We, uh, we'd go out and we'd cut wood to raise money for the church payment. We went out door to door knocking. That's back in the days when uh, my wife and I, even before I met her, we used to go down to the beach and we'd witness and testify, and we'd knock on people's door. There was a big move of God, and we got this new pastor and he was really involved, him and his wife, uh, at this church. But they were from, uh, they weren't from, from California, but he had a wonderful voice. And back in those days, they were making Christian films, such as, it's an old one, A Thief in the Night. And there was another one called uh, Blood on the Mountain. And I remember, we didn't have projection TV. We didn't have projectors. If you wanted to watch one of those movies or films in church, you'd have to get one of these big uh, movie reels and you'd run it through a 16 millimeter projector up on a screen. And we had one of those in church and we were going to watch A Thief in the Night. So there was this older man and he was going to run the projector. I still remember him. He's passed away years ago. And we didn't know it, but he had a little microphone. We had a full house. I bet there was 150 people in the church. I mean, you couldn't, everybody came. There was a big revivals going on, and the church was full, and we were so thankful for that. But none of us knew that this old man who was going to run the projector had a microphone that when he clicked it on, it would overpower any other microphone, and his voice would come out, and that would be the only voice you'd hear. So the pastor got up and, and he talked and he talked a little bit about this uh, about this movie and he started singing a song uh, with some with some music, beautiful voice, wonderful voice, and all of a sudden it sounded terrible. It, it, have you ever stepped on a frog or something? That's what it sounded like. It sounded like somebody was killing an animal, and it was really this guy had a pastor had a higher voice and all of a sudden his voice changed to real low and it sounded sounded terrible and uh, I was kind of sitting there on the platform I think I was playing my drums I looked over and this old man was singing into his microphone uh, while the pastor was singing but it sounded like his voice was coming out of the pastor and the pastor didn't know what to do so he kept singing but you couldn't hear him uh, it was it, it was interesting. Uh, I, I love that about testimonies, but I want to give a little bit of, of my testimony, uh, a little bit, and some of you maybe have heard it, and some of you maybe you haven't. And there's a, there's a scripture, and I think it says, Know ye not that the goodness of God worketh repentance that needeth not to be repent, repented of? And I'm so thankful that God, through from the time I got the, the Holy Ghost when I was 16 up until now, God... He's, um, his goodness is guiding my life. Uh, his mercy is guiding my life. And there's another scripture. It says, he that bringeth up a servant delicately. I love that, that word delicately with great care, treating the right way, doing the right thing for that servant. He that bringeth up a servant delicately shall have him as a son in the end. And I love that about God, that he's delicate with us, and his goodness is working repentance. You know, sometimes 
everyone's different. Everybody has a different testimony on how they got from where they were when they first started out to God to how, to, to how they got to where they are today. God works. I have five children. There's not a one of them that I've been able to treat exactly the same way when it comes to discipline or trying to instill right principles in their life. I had one child, you would just look at this one child and they would melt. And I could probably count on one hand the, the times that I had to discipline her with physical force, you know, the, the old uh, hand of the seat of learning. But then, but then I felt like, for some reason, apparently, my wife and I, we have, we must be stubborn or strong-willed because we produced a lot of strong-willed and stubborn children, which has helped them, and I'm thankful for that. I love that about that character being stubborn and strong-willed. If it's channeled property, will get you a long way in, way in God. Uh, and in this life, in the world, being ha having a certain stubbornness uh, and a will uh, that's not going to quit. In fact, my family motto, uh, and it's helped me and some of my children use it now, I like this, never give up, never surrender. I've used that at work and we've used it at home. We've used it in, in times of physical problems. We, we just use it. We're not going to quit. We're not going to give up. And one of, uh, I couldn't help but think of Sister Cindy and Brother Michael, one of their children. I think maybe that was they were trying to get him to clean their room or something. Uh, and he said, I can't hardly want to. Do you remember that? Is that what he said? I can't hardly want to. Yeah, I, I can't want to, you know. I've felt that way sometimes. I, I, I can't want to do this. I can't even hardly at work. Do you ever feel like, of course, I've got eight months to go until I retire. I finally put my retirement date in to my boss. It seems like a, a long time, eight months, but I try to give them, not that I'm so important or can't be replaced, but I try to give them time to find somebody like me, <laughs> to take the job, you know, and it just seems like sometimes uh, if you're the kind of person that uh, can uh, get things done, you seem to get unusual jobs, and uh, so I'm kind of used to that, but, but we, we have a saying around our house, like I said, you know, that uh, we never give up and, and we never surrender. In fact, years ago, my great aunts, and I'm not going to ramble about this too long, but my great aunts, they, they uh, did a, a genealogy of the Durham family, and it goes a long way, and the family motto going back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, I can't pronounce it because it's in Latin, but it says, through our spirit we shall prevail. And t today's modern vernacular, it means get her done. And I thought, wow, that's just perfect for us. So... So get her done. So, but, but, but with God, but with God, when he starts dealing with us, and he deals with each one of us individually. I've had God discipline me. I, I knew there were times that God was uh, disciplining me, bringing judgment, not only just instructional judgment, but the, the kind where I knew that I was doing wrong. But more often than not, I've been affected by God in a great way just because his mighty love and his great mercy has reached down. And I've, I didn't have that, I can't want to, I wanted to all of a sudden. I wanted to do what was pleasing to God because he had been so gracious with me. He had been so delicate with me. He had, he had uh, uh, his mercy had caused me to come to a place of repentance that needeth not to be repented of. And I'm so thankful about that. But years ago, your testimony, it, it, it is so true. When we first moved from Texas uh, up to Missouri, we were all looking. There wasn't a one of us that had a job. And I think we had one house. There was two houses that the whole church moved into, and one of them we called the flop house. It had one bathroom. I think there was over 20 people staying in there trying to get dispersed out into the community. One bathroom and had entire families living there. And uh, 
it wasn't easy, and we all went out looking for work. And of course, Brother Smith gave a little bit of my testimony the other day about how he told me to just go out and take the first job you see, even if it was minimum wage. And, and I did. That's what I got. I got a minimum wage job. I'm going, really? <laughs> With four kids? You know? Is it? But I took it. And I took this principle that has been taught even in this church that whatever you do, do it with all your might as unto the Lord and God will bless you. And that should be part of our spirit. That should be part of our makeup of what we do for God. Whatever we're going to do, let's do it with all of our heart. Let's do it with all of our might. And let's do, do it with all of our strength. So I took that job and Brother Smith told you how that this... My boss was unreasonable. They wanted me to move a big refrigerator. This thing must have weighed five tons. It seemed like it was a five-ton refrigerator. I had to move it up three flights of steps all by myself. A five-ton refrigerator up three flights of steps all by myself. That's what it felt like. But I sat down, and I thought, I'm not going to quit. I wanted to quit. I want to go and tell that lady, you know, why don't you get me some help? You're asking me to do something that's unreasonable that can't be done. Has God ever asked you to do something that you thought was unreasonable and can't be done? No, he's never done that. The goodness of the Lord worketh repentance, and he brings us up delicately, and I'm so thankful that God is gracious to it. I figured out a way to get that um, refrigerator up those stairs with only knocking one hole in the wall. <laughs> That's all I did. But it was about one or two weeks later, uh, Springfield Public Schools called me, and I'd been putting applications, hoping that God would soon deliver me from this. And uh, Springfield Schools called me, and I, was, I knew a little bit about plumbing, just a little bit. I wasn't a plumber. I'd never been to school to, to be a plumber or anything. So they called me up, and my boss called me in. He asked me a few personal questions. I told him I was a Christian. He said he was a Christian, too. And he started interviewing me, Sister Janique, and he started asking me questions like this. He said, have you ever worked on a commercial, uh, a real large commercial hot water heater? And I said, no, sir. And he wrote that down. He said, have you, ever, have you ever worked on boilers? No, sir. He said, have you ever worked on uh, flexometer type stools? No, sir. And everything he asked me, I had to say, no. And finally, at the very end, he said, well, he said, well, I think that'll do. When do you want to start? <laughs> and it was his God, because everything was asking me. I said, I've never done that before. But it was just God. God, God knew at that time that's exactly what I needed. And God blessed me and blessed our family. And I was there 22 and a half years until I retired. And then we moved up here. And I stayed still love this place. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else but in this area. Don't y'all love it here? I love the people. I love the way God has blessed us and my family. When we moved down here, we, we joined a church and we become part of one big family. So now when y'all suffer, we suffer along with you. But when you rejoice, Sister Janique, we rejoice right along with you. I love being a part of a group like this. So that's just a little bit of my testimony. And uh, so we wanted to go to prayer. And if you have a, another testimony after this, we're going to make room for you. If, if you have a message, we'll make room for you. If you have a, a song, we'll make room for you. We just want the Lord to come in and continue to bless us and help us. So Brother Smith had to go home. He wasn't feeling real good. Uh, nothing serious or anything, but he just wasn't feeling good. So we said, well, we'll, we'll stand in the gap and make up the hedge. So we want to pray for them. And then we want to pray for Sister McGowan. It, she goes in soon. When? Tuesday. Tuesday for the surgery. Okay, so let's pray for her. She's going to be out away from us for about six weeks. And I don't know about y'all, but I can't be away from y'all this one service a week. It, it's hard on me because I like to gather with God's people. I like to shake people's hands. I like to hug the brethren. Uh, you know, I, uh, I love it when Sister Alexander gets up and says, have I told you lately that I love you? I miss that. I miss all those things because I feast on these things throughout the week. It lets me know God still loves me because I'm gathering with his people and encouraging one another. So let's 
pray for Sister McGowan. Let's continue to pray for Brother Gary Wright down in Houston. Let's pray for Sister, uh, 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 what's her name, uh, uh, the Vili granddaughter, Bella. Bella. Let's let's pray for her. Uh, let's pray. Continue, continue to pray for uh, Brother Johnson and his wife Beth. Let's pray for uh, the Weavers, all the Weavers, and and Brother Wallace. Uh, this thing, it, it's Brother Shelby. Yes. Let's can you continue to pray for Brother Shelby. Yes. Brother Daniels. Yes. Let's pray for Brother Daniels. We, I miss him today. Uh, we, we need all of God's people here. And Sister Ann, I guess, is still out, isn't she? Okay, let's pray for her. Sister Sandra, Scott and Amy, let's pray for them. Uh, yeah, Sister Fisher. Does anybody have, can we give her a microphone so we can hear her a little bit? There we go. And we'll try not to interrupt you with uh, a, a real loud voice that sounds like a... a <laughs> um, my band director in high school, my band director in high school played a big part in me coming back to following Christ. And uh, a couple weeks ago, they found a tumor on his brain. And so they pulled it out and they have found that it is cancerous. And so it is all over in his brain and they're not sure if just pray for him. His name is Thomas Galvez. Thomas, all right. Let's pray for him, Sister Cindy. Uh, For Sister Elder, let's pray for her. Sister Fisher. Okay. Okay. We'll pray for them. Let's also pray for the McPhee family. Uh, Sister Alexander. That's your granddaughter. 19. 19. Let's pray for her. Sister Crow, don't you pray, appreciate Sister Crow? I mean, she's been here all these years and she's still faithful. Doesn't miss a service. I appreciate that. pray for you. Uh, has anybody heard Brother Kyle? How's he doing? Okay. So we'll keep him on our prayer list too. Sister Abraham.
Well, let's pray for Sister Abraham, and, and then we'll pray for Jonathan, too. Uh, Sister Nona, did I see your hand? Yes, yes. Brother uh, Rudy, Brother Rudy, I think a lot of us, well, some of us have met him. Uh, I, as far as I know, uh, they're trying to get a new business going. They, they said something about uh, trying to get a new business going. Hallelujah. That's good. That's an answer to prayer. So, uh, continue to pray for her. And, and, uh, God All right. All right. Let's pray for them. Could we have the, if the, oh, Sister Amber. I, I didn't hear that. I Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we'll pray for them. Good. Good, good, good. Oh, Sister D, uh, Brother DJ. <laughs> well, good. Well, we'll do that. We'll do that. Good. Well, could we have the ushers come forward? And we'd like to receive your tithes and offerings, and then we will all stand, and we'll, we'll take these uh, prayer requests before the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy, God. We thank you for this time, Lord, that we can come together, Lord, in your name, and bring all of our cares, all of our concerns, God. We're needy people, Lord, but we serve a God that's more than able to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory, which are truly great. We want to pray for Sister Elder today, God, that you would touch her, help her. God, for the Weaver family, for, for uh, uh, brother, brother Shelby, Lord, for, uh, for the little Veely granddaughter, Lord. Let's pray for the McPhee family. Uh, this... Uh, the band director, Lord, that had such an impact on Sister Fisher. Would you touch him, Lord? Would you help him, God? Keep touching Brother Painter's mother, Lord. Touch Brother and Sister Smith. Uh, Brother McGowan, God, we certainly need your help, Lord. All these things, Jesus. Uh, touch those, Lord, that aren't here, that have a desire to come, Lord. And help them to get here, and if they don't have a desire, uh, Help them to, to want to be here, Lord. You're a God that's more, uh, more than capable of it, Lord. Bless this offering. Help us the rest of the service, God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Um, I know sometimes we hug one another, but let's give everybody a virtual hug. Turn around to somebody and just do like this. It's a virtual hug. Now, don't that feel better? Huh? Don't you feel good? Huh? That makes you feel good, don't it? Huh? Yeah. 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 You can do it to somebody else. Yeah. Don't that feel good? <laughs> All right. <laughs> you can be seated. Glory to God. He's still more precious to me after all these years. Still true and faithful is He through the joys and tears. His hand of wisdom I see after all these years. 
I wasn't going to get up, but had too many signs. <laughs> She's sitting over here. She leans over. I feel like you're going to testify. I'm like, how did you know that? I, mean, I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> but no, I just wanted to get up and say I am so thankful for how vast God is. You know, um, Noah's been going to this school in Branson, and it's kind of a disappointment to everyone because we all thought he was going to move here. And so he's going to be in the church. It was going to be great. You know, I had my brother. Everything was great. And then he didn't come. <laughs> and so uh, he's in Branson, and he's really having a tough time. He can't come home till the end of September, if that. And so he texted me the other day, and he's like, I need a favor. I'm like, okay. He doesn't ask for anything, so it's kind of weird. He's like, I need every church song you have. I need it. I'm like, okay, that's kind of a lot. I was like, are you sure? And he's like, yes, I don't care what it is. I need it now. And I was like, okay. So I gave it to him, and I don't know if you guys have him on Facebook or not, but he was live the other day, and he was talking about God, and he was crying. He was a mess. And um, it really hit me because I really think he would be good here. It's all I prayed for is just him to get in this church. You know, he loves it here. Well, he won't admit it, but he does. And so um, he called the other day. We were on Zoom with all the family. And um, he goes, you know what? I am ready. I'm done. I'm ready to come home. And mom goes, what's home? And he goes, Arkansas. <laughs> And I'm like, there we go, we're getting him. He's like, I need to go to my home church. And I'm like, really? He goes, yeah, it's Arkansas. Kayla, I see it, and I need to go. I need to be there. And so I hope you keep praying for him because we're getting there. I think once he graduates, he's going to move here. I'm hoping I'm crossing my fingers. But we're getting there, and I'm so thankful. Like, when I say how fast God is, he's unlimited. And I, sometimes I forget that. I forget that he's not just in Arkansas. He's not just in this church. He is in Missouri. He's across the world, and he's in our hearts. Not, I just got to not limit God, <laughs> but I'm thankful to be here. But I, I just say, want to say I'm thankful for this church, for the things that I know that God has brought me here. And I don't want that up there. <laughs> that distracts me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> but um, I am real thankful for the family that I have here. I miss the ones that I had. And I'll pray that God will bring them back. And there's many times... I'm sure I'm not the only one that questions whether God loves you or not. But I know this whole year, it, it's like God has shown me so many things, ways that he has loved me. And I was listening to Sister Janika. She was talking about her job. And I thought, Lord, this year started out in a different way. I woke up New Year's Day with a determination in my heart to do some things. And, I mean, I've thought of them many times, but it's not until they get here that you really make those changes. And I started making the changes that I had felt. And then um, I have been praying, and y'all have been praying about my job. I've worked long hours. And I love my job. I love doing dialysis. I like the interaction with the people. There's enough equipment in the, in the room that it makes me feel like I'm still in the lab, but yet I get to interact with the people. Well, but I'm still praying that God would give me something a little bit better so I could have more stability than I felt like that I had with what I was doing, working on the floor. And um, so... Je January, February, March went by, and I had put my resume on Indeed on the Internet, not thought about it, updated it, and it was on there. I thought, well, God knows where I'm at, and he knows what I'm looking for, so I wasn't really actively looking 
for a job. I was just praying. And so I got contact. Um, and the end of March, the job that I was working in Conway kind of started fizzling out where I was because I was jumping from clinic to clinic with DaVita. And that's how they were using me as a floor nurse. And so it was fizzling out. They had got all the nurses they needed. So I, it was, I was fixing to transition somewhere else. Well, it kind of slowed down. They started reducing my hours in March. And I thought, okay, well, about the same time, I started having some physical problems with my sciatic nerve. So the reduction in hours kind of worked with my pain issues. And by the end of April, though, or by the middle of April, I just about could not walk. I mean, I was in so much pain. Well, I got a phone call from this guy that was needing a home dialysis nurse. And I talked to Brother Smith about it, and he just sat in with one of the talks that I had with this guy about it. I told him when I could start, and he said it was fine. And Danny and I thought, well, the best, you know, this is going to work out pretty good because I'm not working very much. I could go ahead and start working with him, get my training in. Then when the day to start came, I'd be trained and ready to go. Well, that didn't work. He wanted me to go straight to work without learning his his policies and procedures, and I was beginning to pick up on this. Well, the last week before I was to start with him, I was going to work with him the whole week, but I was still full-time with DeVita, and they changed my schedule, so I wasn't going to be able to work with him. And when I called and told him this, he said, oh, well, I'm not flexible, and I'm going, red light, red light, red light. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, I said, well, I am still working with DeVita, and I don't want to leave them in the lurch, I said, I'm not going to be able to work with you this week. And he said, well, I'm not flexible. So, I mean, it was like, I thought, no. I mean, it was, I mean, it was obvious. I thought, I, I said, well, this is not going to work out for us. So I had already turned my resume or my leave in to the Vita. So I told him, I said, the job that I thought I was going to take, I'm not going to be able to take. It's not working out. So I'm just going to stay with you all. Well, then they came back. <laughs> And they, mind you, they had two clinics, they had no nurses, and they come back and said, well, we don't have any full-time no jobs. You have to work part-time. <laughs> I'm going, oh, I was used to working 48 hours. They would want to cut me to 24, and I'm going, that ain't going to pay my bills. <laughs> and, but I didn't know what to do. I mean, I was, that was on Friday, and my last day was on May 5th. The day after my the weekend week after my birthday, I thought, "Well, oh, happy birthday, Holly." <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I thought. So I, I was I was upset, I was concerned, but I thought, "God, you know what you're doing. I don't, I can't see from where you're sitting, so I, I'm just going to leave it in your hands." So I told him, I said, "Well, I guess I'll take whatever you give me, you know." So that's how I was. That's how I faced my birthday Monday morning. I was doing something, I don't know what I was doing, but I got a phone call, and I answered it, and this person asked me all cordiality, and I said, this was me, and she said, I am from U.S. Renal in Pine Bluff. I represent them, and I said, okay, and um, she said, I found your resume on Indeed, and I want to give an interview with you, and I said, okay. So we interviewed, and the job that she was looking for was for a PD nurse, which is dialysis that you teach people to do at home through their stomach. So, and that's what I had tried to get because it's a lot less, less work than, well, a lot less physical work, let's put it that way. And so I interviewed with her, and she said, I would like for you to interview with the FA and the PD nurse at the clinic. And so... I said, okay, uh, but I've got to work on Wednesday. I said, I can't do it until Thursday. She said, that's fine. So I waited all day Thursday, and they finally called, and we interviewed, and we talked, and they asked me all kinds of questions, and I answered them to the best of my ability. And interview questions nowadays are not like they used to be. I mean, it's like a round table, everybody, all kinds of 
what's, what's, do you, what's, what's, if you would do this, how would you react to this? And in this situation, what would you do? And I'm going, oh, I hate those kind of questions because your brain, your brain goes blank. You can't think of anything. And in the case of this, you have it so for, so these are the, cop, the kind of questions they ask. They put you in these situations that you may have or maybe have not ever faced, and there you've got to tell them what you would do. And so, you know, I did the best I could, and um, and they said, okay, well, we'll get back with you. And I asked them, I said, about how long would you know? Can I expect? They said within 24 hours we'll know something. Well, Friday came and went. I thought I didn't get that job. <laughs> I, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't get it. And so the weekend came, and I, just, I had just buckled down. I had to work Saturday with DeVita. So I just buckled down that that's what I was going to have to do. And I was just going, I went through my budget again, and I, I mean, I was crunching the pennies. And um, so I thought, I can make it, I can do it until whatever God wants to do for me will happen. And so Monday came, I went to see my chiropractor and he was fixing to give me an adjustment and my phone rang and I looked at it, I said, I have got to take this phone call. And so he stepped out of the room and I answered it and they said, Holly, this is the U.S. Renal, you got the job. And I'm going, all right. <laughs> and, and I said, how much are they gonna pay me? And they told me what they were gonna pay me and I'm going, huh. Thank you, Lord, Cause, because I went from a 48-hour job down to a 40, and I mean, it's 40. I don't get overtime at all. A uh, 40-hour day job, but the raise that I got makes up, I get more on a 40-hour week than I was getting 48 hours overtime, eight hours overtime on the job that I was doing. I don't work the floor. I'm pretty much sitting in front of a computer all day except when I train. This week I'm going to do my first training with a patient. And um, I don't think I will ever have to worry about having dementia or Alzheimer's <laughs> because they, I'm, I'm, there's, it's like casework. And I'm caught in my brain. When I go home, when I was working physical labor, I could go home, go to bed, and go to sleep. Now I'll go home, and my brain has to just kind of start uncoiling. <laughs> but I feel, I know God gave me this job because I didn't reach out. I didn't know it was there. And I know that he took care of me at a time when my, my physical health was at a place where, I mean, I'm still having problems. I'm getting injections start for the problems that I'm having because I've got a fractured lumbar, and that's, that's pinching my sciatic nerve. And I know that God has given me a, a job that I can still work. You know, I, you're talking about retirement. I could retire in a year, but I, I'm not ready to retire. I feel like I want to still continue to be an asset to society and to people. And I just, I don't have any reason to retire, really, so I might as well work. It keeps me out of trouble. But I know that God gave me something that I could can continue to work and be an asset. And I'm just thankful. I thought, God, when I hung up the phone after they told me I got the job, I thought, Lord, I, I am so undeserving of anything that I get because I know I know past things that I've done. I know past choices that I've made. And I've not made all of the right choices. But I know that God still loves me. And he has shown me in so many ways this year that he has not forgotten me. Oh, and by the way, a week before I started the job, I had to give me a new car. So, so you know, it, it's, my stress level went from here to way up here. And, but God has taken care of me. He's blessed me, and I just, I, I don't really think I have a complaint. I don't know that I can, because I wake up breathing every morning. I wake up healthy. I wake up talking and, 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 and thinking in my right brain, and I think we have no reason to complain. God, as I look over our church people, I work with people that are so sick. I work with people that... I don't know what they do when they go home. I really don't want to know what they do and who they get around, but I know that my atmosphere, my interaction, puts me at high risk. I'm like Hannah. We're at high risk with 
all this stuff that's going on, but yet God is protecting us. You know, he's protecting us. And, and I think, I look at our, our, our family here, and I thought, we're healthy. Really, we're healthy people. We don't have all of these sicknesses that you hear in this church. And I thank God, you're such a merciful and loving God. And I just think, well, I think, I, don't, I may not talk to people very much. I'm not a big talker, you know. Really, I'm not. <laughs> Unless you know me, you know. <laughs> and uh, But I love all of you. And if I don't say much to you, it's not because I'm mad at you or anything. I just... I just, that's just me. I can be in a room full of people and be by, my, by myself, I, you know, that's just me. So I want y'all to know I love you and I appreciate you and I really do think, thank God that I'm here. I get up in the morning, I, you know, I, I, the body creaks, and it kind of hurts, and my hip's like, oh, you know, but I, me and the dog get up, and we make our way through the house, and we get our coffee, I do his little, we do our little routine and everything, but the other day, um, I think it was last Sunday when we were in church, I was thinking about, um, and I had to go to the to the orthopedic for my hand. My hand's really been bothering me. He told me I had arthritis in it. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, you feel like you got arthritis everywhere. And, but you know, I have such a good life. Um, I just, I'm so blessed. And, um, and I've told myself this many times, that's part of getting old. Not that I don't think the Lord could touch me because I know he can. He's mightier than we can even imagine. He's vast, <laughs> you know, he's everywhere. And he loves us, and he cares about us. But um, I'm going to serve the Lord no matter whether my hip gives me a problem every morning or not. I want to come to church every Sunday, and I want to be here when the church doors open. And um, I know it might hurt, and it might, you know, I might be in pain, but I'm asking the Lord not to only, I mean, if he wants to touch my body, I'd be so thankful. Oh, you'd, I'd be screaming, thanking, thanking the Lord. But I want him to touch my heart and my mind. I want him to, to put that seed down inside of me that will grow. And I'll, I'll hear the word of God and know what, he's, what they're talking about. I want, to, um, I want to feel his touch. I want to feel his um, spirit. I want to feel it wherever I go. I want that so bad. And I've been asking the Lord, Lord, I know you can touch my body, but I want you to touch my mind, my heart, my soul. And um, help me to learn to know you more and to um, get what you have for me to get and to love and to, you know, I want all those things that he can only give us. He can touch our mind. He can touch our heart. And he can, um, he can um, help us. And that's my desire. That's my desire. And um, I just love the Lord. I love these people. I love all of you here so much. And I'm so thankful to be here. And um, I know uh, the Lord is good. He's good. He's um, with us. He's helping us. And um, uh, I think about um, y'all. I know you guys probably think this is weird. But when I deposit money in our checking account and I look at all of everybody's offering, um, I started it with Brother DJ. I look at Brother DJ. When I look at his offering envelope, I go, Lord, touch this young man. He's so faithful. He's so good. And he comes when he can, and you know, and that's what I do. When I see all that, I, I you know, I try to remember your need or, or something that's going on in your life, and um, and the Lord and y'all are so faithful, and y'all are so sweet about. I mean, I told Brother Smith, I said we have the most faithful saints in our church. I said they are such good people, and um, and I just love the Lord, and I appreciate what He's doing in everybody's lives, and um, how He's answering your prayers, and and um going with you and helping you. And God bless you all. The other night I was, usually I have a Bible app and I, 
have a program that I read, and um, I usually do it at night before bed. Um, the other night, I realized I was just too tired to do that. I don't know if anybody else has ever experienced that. <clears throat> but so I started to feel a little guilty about not, you know, taking the time. And so I started just quoting some scriptures that I knew, you know, from memory. And one of them was the 23rd Psalm. Um, we all know that one. But when, we got, when it got to the place where it says, He restoreth my soul, I smiled. I'm laying in bed, and I smiled, and I realized, I caught myself, I realized I smiled at that. And I thought, well, why? You know, so I started thinking a little bit more, like, why did I smile about that? And um, so then I got to thinking what the, the word restore actually means. And people who do restoration projects or, you know, paintings or cars, perhaps, you know, they, they restore old vehicles. What does that mean? It, they make them, they make them new. They make them back to their, you know, better, or back to the original whatever. And um, I just felt so thankful that the Lord took the time to restore me. I mean, I'm hoping eventually it'll be better than I've ever been, you know. And it's a process, as we all know. And as Sister Durham got up, I was thinking of that song. Um, I think Bridget um, Nielsen, which is not Nielsen anymore. Um, Lewis, yes. Um, used to sing it, but to have my heart circumcised so that I'm sensitive to your spirit, to be able to hear you when you speak. I want to know when you say go, to obey when you say stay, or stand still, Lord, and see you move for me. And those are just, I know they weren't, didn't really go together, but those were the thoughts I had, and I just wanted to thank God for his restoration process, and then I can stay in the boat and, you know, till it's finished, I suppose. Well, I'm here, I'm thankful to be here today, and I'm thankful for all of you to, for being here today. I'm thankful for my friends, and I'm thankful for all of you, and I'm thankful for my mommy and daddy. Stirred me up there. <laughs> I appreciate God today. I thank God for covering us. I thank God for covering me on my job. I've been all around that. But God saw fit to keep me, to cover me. And I'm grateful for that. I thank the Lord for Sister Durham. I, she spoke the sentiments of my heart uh, to want everything that song you know fill up all of my being and ever to abide i i praise god uh for his mercy and uh i tell this testimony it uh ties in with uh everyone's uh i needed some money that's all to it i needed some money and uh I've been stressed out before when I was in California and taking care of the responsibility of my own. And, and I was stressed. I was stressed. I was stressed. Uh, so stress tried to come up on me again. You know, man, things now it's one income. And I've been there before. And so, of course, stress is going to come knocking at your door. And, uh, and bring you down, want to try and bring you down. But um, I began to talk to stress. That song that we sing um, about the storm, telling God about the storm, don't tell God, don't tell the, uh, God about the storm, but tell the storm about your God, how big your God is. Well, I began to talk to stress and tell stress, no, I refuse to be stressed anymore. I refuse to allow stress to come in again. I've been there. I know what it feel like. I told him, I'm going to wait on God. I'm going to wait on the Lord. I said, now, I had some resources that I could ask, could you... Lend me this money 
But the thought comes, but you got to pay it back. So I, got, I said, and I'm still going to be in the same condition, you know. So I said, no, you know what? I'm going to wait on God. I'm going to wait on God. I'm not going to say nothing to nobody. And I was talking to this young lady, uh, and I told her, you know what? Different ones tell their testimony about how God blessed them with money and they needed this amount of money and, and God came in and blessed them. I said, I ain't never had that testimony before. Not that I, you know, don't get any finances or anything, but I said, I ain't never had that testimony before. Well, the next day, my son, his wife, and my granddaughter sent me some money. I didn't even ask them. I wasn't going to ask nobody. But I tell you, I was so grateful for what God had did. The Lord was just letting me know he'll take care of me. That's all he's just letting me know. Regardless how things look, God's going to take care of me. I belong to him. I want to learn how to trust him with all my heart. And not lean to my own understanding because it will mess me up. And that's a fact. I know that for a fact. But I'm so grateful today for this almighty God, this almighty God that we serve. He's worthy to be praised. And I praise him for the goodness and his mercy. So I just, I, I praise God for my family. I praise God for this church. And when I can't be here, I still, I just come in, in, in the spirit and just, I see all of you. And I just praise God for all of you. I thank God for, oh, hallelujah. I just thank God for you. And Lord, uh, my ceiling fell in in the living room. And I was in the back of the house, and the way it sounded, I'm like, oh, my God, what was that? And uh, when I went up front, I'm like, and I seen all of that laying out there in the floor. But my neighbors next door, they heard it too. And they ran over there because they thought I had failed. They came right on in, and I praised God for them because... I mean, they was getting trash bags and picking up stuff and just cleaning up. And when they got through, I praise God that I didn't have to touch anything. So I know that was God. And I'm like, Lord, you had me out the way. He kept me in the back of the house until this happened. And I'm like, they said, you're not scared to stay in there? I said, no, I mean, I said, as long as ain't no rats up there in that attic and they ain't finna come down here and visit me, uh, no, I'm not scared, but if they decide to show up, they can have this house because I'm gone. <laughs> Whew, but I, I just praise God you all that during that time that um, how am I going to go about getting this fixed? So I called the um, insurance people, house insurance, and they told me, no, ma'am, it's going to have to be an act of God. Well, who you think did this? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I just praise God. I'm like, Lord, it's it's back on you then, because I don't have no money, and I can't pay to get this thing fixed, and I don't like sitting up in here overnight, and I just seem like, y'all, I just heard so much. I mean, it just, all kind of spirits was coming in there, and I'm like, look, I bind you, 
And my father told me, whatever that I bind in earth, he'd bind it in heaven. So you spirits, y'all going to have to get on up out of here and leave me alone because I'm not afraid of you because I'm going to send you straight to hell if you come up in here messing with me. But uh, the Lord let that uh, stenomous check come in. I'm like, okay, Lord, thank you. My God is on time. He's an on time God. Oh, oh hallelujah, Jesus. Woo. So I praise God for that. And the Lord let, I mean, here come folks from out of everywhere wanting to come and fix this. And I'll do this. And I, and I was kind of waiting on God because I don't want all these different people in my house. And I don't know, I just, it, that was just really getting on my nerves. So I called her, uh, Grandma Parker. And she said, you know, my brother does that kind of work. And I'm going to get with him and send him over there. And she did that. And I praise God that, you know, he wanted to do that um, popcorn stuff in my cell. I told him, no, I don't want that. Just make mine flat and smooth. I'm old and just just leave me with, with what they've been done before. I don't need none of that new stuff. And the rock. Uh, it wasn't long after then, y'all, my electricity went out. So now, that means everything in my freezer, my refrigerator. I mean, what am I supposed to do? My brother only has a <laughs> refrigerator. He, you know, his freezer don't work no more, and my daughter has a freezer, and she said, yeah, you can come on over here and borrow ours because they ain't got nothing in no way. And so uh, <laughs> whenever I get my electricity back fixed, it won't be no need for me to have a freezer either. I might as well just park it and put that door somewhere because I won't have nothing in it because they're going to eat it all up. But I praise God, the Lord blessed me too. This man, he wanted to charge me $6,000 to fix this electricity problem that I'm having. This is an old house, y'all. I'm still working with the fuses that you <laughs> go down to Bessel's Aces Hardware somewhere and get and get you a couple of boxes to let lights go out you just go on and stick you a fuse in it well that wasn't working for me either so when the electrician did come out there he told me he said ma'am all this stuff you got going on here is outdated this this is way back there i said yeah i said i admit that the house is older than i am so and they put it together. I was still out there playing jacks. And uh, I just praise God that all my neighbors was there for me. And I said, Lord, I said, I don't know what kind of trial this is that I'm going through. But it's still on you. You got all the money. You got control of it. You know who can help and who can't help. And I, I mean, hey, I'm, I'm out here, yeah. I, I felt like that I ought to get me a cardboard, get out here on the streets, look like they doing pretty good. I said, well, Lord, you know, my physical body, I'm, I'm not able to get out there and do that. I said, so, Lord, it's still on you. And I just praise you for it. And I'm just praying. I'm like, Lord, I need you right now to 
walk with me like you did with Adam and Eve in the garden. I need you to talk to me. Oh, I just praise you today. Oh, God, I love you. I love your people today, Father. Oh, glory to God. I just thank you. Mm, it just feels so good to me when I can feel God's spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. Y'all, I don't mean to take up a whole lot of time. But what I got to, I got to express myself. Hallelujah, Jesus. I've been bothered with my hip, too. Oh, my hip was killing me. And y'all, I'm a wimp. I, I, I'm allergic to pain. And, and we just don't work out real good together. But I went to the doctor, and he sent me to an orthopedic specialist, he says. And when I got there, this was a doctor that I had used in 2000. When he, he fixed my left hip and got me back to going. And this is my right hip that I'm having trouble with. So he asked me to go to Arkansas Surgery in Maumeo and get this shot in my hip. And he said, well, that's going to tell me what I need to do. And he had already told me that the cartilage was thin. And he wanted me to prepare my mind for a hip replacement. Oh, God, I'm scared. And I don't want nobody else cutting on me, Lord. And I'm asking you to come on down with your big old knife. And you do this surgery. You work with it. You take care of it, Father. So when I went back to see the doctor, he told me, and I praise God, y'all, that I don't need no hip surgery. I don't need it. He told me it was arthritis. So y'all, like I said, I'm the biggest wimp in the world. I admit it. You talk bang, and I'm already crying. I'm just booing everywhere. So he just gets up and walk on out the room. Like, okay, you just go ahead and do your thing, because I'm gone. I got other patients to did too. We, but I, I praise God for the doctor, because he was straight up and fair with me. Because God, I know God was working in there for me. Because God already knew that I was a wimp in the beginning. So I wanted to be able to deal with this little arthritis. And I could talk to arthritis. Whew. But I just praise God, you all, that um, everybody was the... The derms, I just, I praise God for you people. Yes, Lord. That's okay. You can read my mail anytime you want to. I praise God for you. Sister Nona, I praise God for you. It's okay. You can read my mail too. And I just, I just praise God for his people. And just knowing that this, this, this plague that, that has been brought up on, on the earth, I just got to stay still and wait on God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I just thank you. I thank you, God. When, you know, when I started reading stuff, when the plague, was, he came with the frogs. And I mean, oh, God, that, I'm sure enough scared of the frogs. I didn't want to be bothered with none of them because, I, I mean, I could just see them just hopping over me. and I mean, I just praise God. Ooh, it is so beautiful to be able to come into my church home and just praise God any way I want to. Hallelujah. 
And I just thank God for a place that I can feel his spirit. I pray for my people. I pray that God just bless them and keep them highly anointed. Hallelujah, Jesus. And Sister Linda, I'm like you. Well, how you doing? I'm highly favored. Woo, I just praise God for the way that I feel and the things that I can do. So I thank God for you people. And I do love you. From the bottom of my heart, I love you. And I thank God for all of you. Yes. I just ask God to just go in and out your homes and just keep you blessed up and, and anointed. Oh, hallelujah. I just praise God for you today. Thank you, Jesus.